All right, everybody, we got a fun one for you today. On social media yesterday, somebody put up a redraft of the 2015 NHL draft. That's the one with Miko Rantanen. And I wasn't exactly happy with where they had him, even on the redraft. So I said to Kyle, we're going to redraft the entire decade from 2010 to 2019. That's happening today on Locked on Avalanche. Your Locked on Avalanche, your daily podcast on the Colorado Avalanche. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, everybody, welcome to the Locked On Avalanche Podcast. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Chris Maselli. With me, as always, Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, Kyle Sullivan. Thank you for tuning in and making it your first listen of the day. Always appreciated. Make sure to follow us on social media, LOP and underscore Avalanche on Twitter, Locked On Avalanche on Instagram. Questions, comments, concerns, any opinions to LockedOnAvalanche at gmail.com. And follow us on our YouTube channel over on YouTube. Hit subscribe, get notified when a new show goes live. And definitely subscribe to our subtext as well. Link to that is in the show notes below. Subscribe, chat with Kyle and I one-on-one. Uh, all right, you can see on the rundown, it's pretty much a draft yesteryear episode that we're going to do. And the reason why we're doing this is, one, it's the off season. Why not? Two is uh, on, on Twitter yesterday, uh, Jay Fresh. He seems yeah. to be coming up a lot in our episode. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yesterday, we did the whole thing with uh, the comparisons and used his uh, stat cards to do it. And yesterday, he put up, on his Twitter page, a redraft of the 2015 draft. And like I said in the opening, that's the one with Miko Rantanen. And on the redraft, he still had Connor McDavid, number one. Completely understand that. And he still had Jack Eichel at number two. And he put Miko Rantanen at number three. To which I said, "Mm -hmm, I don't, uh, not so fast, to quote Lee Corso. Um, I probably would have put Miko at two. And there were some other people out there saying, like, I would have even put Mitch Marner at three and put Eichel at four. Yeah. So that's, I mean, you can, it's a good conversation to have. I love doing these things. So the way we're going to do it is we're not going to (laughs) redraft 10 years of drafts, right? That would, I mean, we'd have a 10 hour show. Um, We're just going to look at the Avalanche draft pick, who they took, are we happy with it, and if not, who was still available at that pick, basically who was beyond them uh, that you would kind of go back now and say like that that would have been a a good fit for the Avs. Yeah, we're going to make the best decade in Avalanche history. Absolutely. This is going to be a a phenomenal team that will go down in the history books as uh, a a 10 consecutive – Stanley Cup championship. They it won the whole to the music. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, if you're watching on YouTube, we're gonna we're gonna screen share. Uh, why not just jump right into it here? With so all our gonna... everydayers, our bestest best friends. Exactly. So we're gonna screen share this here. Let me uh, do it that way. It blows it up a little bit more. So um, this is where we're gonna start. We're gonna start in in 2010. And there you see the number 17 pick for the Colorado Avalanche was Joey Heishan. Um, Did not do much. 13 career games played. I think it'd be safe to say we are not happy with that pick. Yeah, that would be a pass. That would definitely be a pass. Uh, And you look at it was picked right behind him. Vladimir Tarasenko was picked 16. So he's off the board. You cannot pick Vladimir Tarasenko. Uh, who, who would be kind of the guy that you're going with. And as we're going down this list here for the remainder of the first, there's some pretty good names on here. Kevin Hayes, Evgeny Kuznetsov, uh, Brock Nelson, Charlie Coyle. Get into the set. Uh, right. He's, he's right up there. Yeah. Uh, you have Tyler Pitlick. Uh, Justin Falk is on there. Patrick Nemeth is on there. Tyler Toffoli in the second round. Uh, is there one that stands out to you that was beyond where the Avalanche pick that you would take? Honestly, especially at this time, 2010, boy, I, I keep thinking of what the Avalanche would have looked like with a young Kevin Hayes. Yes. Yeah. I, I think for me, it, it'd probably go between Hayes, Kuznetsov, and Brock Nelson. 
and I'd probably go with with Kuznetsov for my yeah. pick. I mean, I, you couldn't go wrong there. I mean, yeah. he's got 680 games. So yeah, I mean that, that that's a solid. And you know, he went ten picks after where the Avalanche picked. Now, you know, looking back, would anybody, if you're redrafting this, where does Joey Heshawn go? Um, probably Best Buy. Probably, yeah. <laughs> probably nowhere. Don't mean to, you know, kick the guy while he's down, but uh, that was not a pick that really went anywhere for the for the Avs. In 2011, we're gonna have to give me a second here to blow this up again. This is uh, this was a good one for the Avalanche. Uh, number one was Ryan Nugent Hopkins to the Oilers. Colorado picked Gabe Landeskog with the second pick. Huberdeau went three to Florida. Um, you have Adam Larson to the Devils, Ryan Strom to the Islanders, Zabinajad, Mark Shifley, Sean Coutier, uh, Dougie Hamilton. I, that's a solid top 10 right there. That is a really good draft. And you keep going down. Um, Ryan Murphy, JT Miller. Who else we got here? Um, Chris, you can keep going down the rest yeah. of this draft. Who the Avalanche selected at number two? We're we're Doesn't here, matter. we're here Doesn't making matter. the best Avalanche decade. Yeah, but none of that would even be possible if the Avalanche did not make that number two pick. No, that 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 one you are you are you are making that pick ten times out of ten. Yes, absolutely. There's Brandon Sod in there in the second round. And Matt Nieto. There's Matt Nieto there in the second round. My boy. Uh, there's William Carlson. So it's a really solid, good draft. Um, yeah, the Avalanche do not do anything other than pick Gabe Landeskog again. Uh, but if you were to redraft this, interesting question, who would Edmonton take at number one? Do I mean, if they, they, would... they <laughs> would probably flirt with Landeskog or Huberdo. Huberdo, I would think, yeah. I, I think Landeskog is, is perfect right where he is, but I you probably are flipping. I don't want to say flipping as the Nugent Hopkins is going to three. Uh, he might go down a few more. He'd probably... He'd probably still be a top 15 pick, I would say. Unless the Oilers need a DJ. So Benajed's up there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but Huberto would probably be the number one pick, and the Avalanche would still have Landis Scott get number two. So uh, I think that's a solid selection there by the Avs. Next year, 2010, uh, number one, Edmonton. Again, Neil Yakupov. You got Ryan Murray at two. Galchenyuk there at number three. How about that? Uh, the Avs, I don't think they had a pick in this first round here. They did not. Yeah. Um, nope. Double checking. Yeah, they did not have a pick there. So I'm um, just kind of looking through some players here just for the heck of it. Matt Dumba's there. Jacob Trouba's there. Mikhail Grigorenko. Grigorenko. My boy. Yeah. Cody Cece. Tom, uh, Tomas Hurdle. Pretty good draft there. Pretty good draft. So nothing for the Avalanche in 2012. Let's do 2013 here, and there's the big one right there, man. Colorado Avalanche, Nathan McKinnon, number one overall, followed by Barkoff. There's Jonathan Drewin. There you go. Uh, Seth Joan Elias Lindholm, Val Nachuskin down there at number 10. This one you're not changing. No. A, a million times out of a million, the, you are going down this road right here. And it's it's kind of sweet and poetic that now we're talking about Nathan McKinnon and Drewin possibly on a line together. Mm -hmm. teammates at Halifax drafted same year, same round. Now they're teammates again. Yeah. <clears throat> you look at some other ones here. Val Nachuskin, Nikita Zadorov, uh, Nikita Zadorov, <laughs> Buffalo Sabres, number 16, Andre Burakovsky, number 23 with the Capitals. Uh, Marco J Dano. JT Comfer, second round, 35th overall. Um, I thought there was one other one here a little bit later. It was Tyler Bertuzzi. Wow. No, nope, thank you. <clears throat> no. So, um, yeah, oh man, Spencer it. Martin. Let's go. Where was that? Uh, I think it was second six, pick. Yeah, 63rd. Third round. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but no, this one. So, so far, I think that are doing pretty well here. Yeah. With their drafts. Um, where are we on time? All right. Good time to take a break and then we'll continue this. So let me just move this stuff around here, <clears throat> bring up FanDuel, talk about that, and then we'll continue on. Uh, but you can take your first swing at betting Major League Baseball on FanDuel and get 10 times your first bet in, in bonus bets back up to $200. That's right, Kyle. You bet just $20 and you'll get $200 in bonus bets back and you get that win 
or lose. That's $200 you can spend betting on everything from the money line to the over-under to who you think is going to hit the first home run to who you think is going to win the home run derby, which is that still going on as we are recording I believe this. it is. I believe it is. Who was the favorite to win that? I, I really I didn't even pay attention to who was in it. I, know, I don't know who it was, but I know Mookie Betts was not. He did not show up tonight. Wasn't that guy in the Mets in it? Uh, I thought there was a Met in it. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't think Look, there was a Brave in it, so that's all no. that to me. Okay, well, uh, but you could have bet on that. I'm sure many people did. So you can do it all in an app that's safe, secure, super easy to use. Plus, when you win, you can get paid instantly. There's no better place to bet on Major League Baseball and the All-Star Game than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Sign up today. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get up to $200 in bonus bets, that's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel is the official partner of Major League Baseball. All right, let's jump back in to the draft here. I got to maneuver some stuff around. There we go. So uh, where are we here? We're we going did into 2014. 2014. This blow this one up a little bit. Um, number one was Aaron Eckblad at, at Florida. Sam Reinhart went to Buffalo at two. There's Leon Dreisaitl at number three. Um, Avalanche were down 23rd here. Connor Bleckley, and that was uh, we talked about him not that long ago, not swimmingly, but um, he did make an, uh, an episode of Locked on Avalanche. So, in agreement that that is not, I mean, you look at that. Yeah, Bubkiss, nothing. Never played. Never played a down. You know what hurts NHL. even more? Go down two names. Yes, that's the one that you're taking. Uh, I, I don't think. I mean, there's some other names in here. Um, the possible, like talking about a young Kevin Hayes in 2010, it just it makes your mind wonder. Mm-hmm. A young David Pasternak for the Avalanche? Are you kidding me? Yeah. Pasternak, I mean, that that's, and you, you think like that, he was right there, you know, and even the one that went right after him and Jared McCann, I would have yeah. taken that. <laughs> um, but Pasternak is there. Adrian Kempe is, was there. Uh, we got Brandon Lemieux. Ivan Barbashev is there. Um, that's your Demko. Let's go. Demko was there. Uh, I think Kubel. <laughs> oh, there he is. Yeah. <laughs> Nicholas Abe Kubel. I thought this was the one where was didn't Taves go in this round? No, maybe not. I was Taves was what the 2014 draft? What year are we in here? But you have yeah, Ilya Sorokin. This was it. <clears throat> you had Sorokin there too. Sorokin was in there. Braden Point. Look at that, man. Braden Point wow. in the third round. What a steal. That's a solid one right there. Wow. Um God, I, there he is, Taves. Yep. What's over oh, what round is he in? Fourth round. Dante's in the fourth round. How about that one right there, man? Oh, we got Alexis Pepin. That's all we needed. <clears throat> yeah. We don't need Igor Shesterkin or Igor Michael Bunching. Shesterkin. Igor Shesterkin was uh, fourth round right after Michael Bunting. Uh, so that's that's the – I mean, you got some really good names here. Do you go Shesterkin or do you go Pasternak? Oh, Pasternak. Are you kidding <laughs> you go me? go Pasternak? Because you have you, young you Landis have Gog and young Nathan McKinnon, and now you're going to have young Pasternak. Unbelievable. Everybody wow. in the third and fourth round of this, this was a, 2014 was the year the scouts were asleep. It wasn't that, that, you know, yeah, Braden Point. I didn't really realize that he was that late. Um, who else is in here? Victor, Victor Arvidsson's in there. Sam Lafferty. He's in the fourth round. Uh, Lafferty, where's Lafferty? What, what, he was right under your. Uh, your pick. <laughs> okay. Let's see if we go to, and it looks like it's going. Kevin LeBlanc is in there. Wow, man. Victor Olofsson. Let's go. Um, Pierre Engvall. Man. The, you From got Moto, some really where, good... where uh, Sampo Ranta is. Man, you got some really good late round picks in this draft. This you really is a did. really solid draft. But I think that's where you're going. Um, yeah, you're going Pasternak and Bleckley probably does not even get drafted. So that's probably two guys so far that the Avalanche have picked. That it's like boom or bust right now, right? Yeah. It's you know you got guys that are obviously and we, they're still on the team um, are doing well, or 
to redraft, they're they're not probably getting picked. Yeah, halfway through the decade, it's either keep them or they're in a completely different line of work. Right, exactly. Moving on to 2015, That's uh, this is the one that kind of started this whole discussion between Kyle and I. Like I said, um, you got Connor McDavid at number one, no-brainer. Jack Eichel was two, Dylan Strom was three to Arizona, Mitch Marner uh, four to the Maple Leafs. Down and down you go, and there is Miko Rantanen at ten. So this is a this is going to be a fun one because yeah, the Avalanche don't change that pick, right? The Avalanche yeah. take Miko Rantanen. So if with this one we'll do it. We'll, we'll talk about you know if you're redrafting because I, I said I didn't I didn't like that he was still number three, and if he was number three, he would have went to Arizona. He's not going to unseat Connor McDavid, right? That's not going to happen. But I, I would say he goes next. Yes, don't you it'd think be, so? Mi- It'd be McDavid, Rantanen, Mitch Marner, and then Jack Eichel. Yeah, I mean, Eichel would probably be four, and that's not bad. <clears throat> um, I just feel like now that, you know, you, you can throw that Eichel is a, a cup winner as well. Um, but So they both have that. Miko, his stats are better than Jack Eichel's, and partly that is because Eichel has been hurt a lot. Miko really has – I mean, he's missed games here and there, but he's never really missed – as much time as Eichel has, and he's played his entire career with one team. Yep. So, you know, I, I kind of feel like you'd put him up there at number two. Yep. Um, and, and this is another good draft here. Let's see. You got Jake DeBrusque there, uh, Matthew Barzell, and Kyle then Connor. You know, and good it's draft. fun. We're doing this. We're doing this and looking at who the Avalanche might have missed. But in this draft, I could imagine the locked on other NHL network shows looking at this draft saying, why did we not? What? what how did you not see this in Miko Rantanen? Right. Absolutely. And we've said it before. Uh, the Florida Panthers are not too happy with Colorado Avalanche because uh, they got Miko and then Florida picked right after them. They got Landeskog and Florida picked right after them. And same thing with Nathan McKinnon, and they picked right after So those three guys. Sorry, Armando. Uh, yeah, <laughs> he, knows, he knows it full well, too. So, um, yeah, I think this is this is a, a no-brainer that the Avalanche would definitely keep Mika Rantanen. But imagine if, they, if he did go to, and he went to Buffalo instead of Jack Eichel. Oh, where EJ is. Yeah. They'd, 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 be, they'd be teammates thing. for they'd be teammates this year for the first time ever. <laughs> That's so weird. Yeah. Uh 2016. That is year Austin Matthews went number one. Patrick never Line. Well, yeah, never heard of him. Patrick Line, number two to Winnipeg. Pierre Luc Dubois to the Blue Jackets. There's uh Pooley Arby. He's available if you want him. He went number four to the Oilers. Uh, then you have Kachuk there at six, Sergeyev. And the Avalanche went with Tyson Jost at number 10. Um, you're redrafting. You are not going to take Tyson Jost. Especially when you see who's at 14. 14, Charlie McAvoy. But go a few more down, man. Jacob Chikrin. Oh, boy. I take Jacob Chikrin. Um, who else we got? Hey, hey, look at that. My Riley boy, Tufty. <laughs> Riley Tufty, um, even Tage Thompson, Sam Steele at 26. Sam Steele, um, there was let's see who's in the second round. You got Jordan Cairo, uh, Alex to Hmm, who else is, is it? Sammy G right there, <laughs> second round, Carter Hart, Ryan Lindgren, um. Taylor Radish, that's not, I mean, nah, he's not go, bad. Right How about that one? Adam Ooh. Fox. Wow. Adam Fox, wow. Who would Boy. you take? We're redrafting here. You're not going to take Tyson Jost. Who's your guy? I, I think I still would go with McAvoy. Would you really? He is Over, he's over a... someone like Adam Fox? Yes. No way. No way. I, uh, well, oh, yeah. no. Come on. Come, Kyle, I'm going to give you a moment to to rethink this and and make another selection. You, you get to what? re redraft. <laughs> I, I'm curious to hear what everybody thinks. If you were had a choice between the two, would you take Adam Fox or McAvoy? Because oh, I think McAvoy God. is such a unit. And again, we're talking. You have the big three already established in Colorado at this point, right? McAvoy would be just an absolute 
unit with this team. Imagine having Kale McCarr and Adam Fox together. Oh, that, that, I mean, we're see, yeah, we're that talking, way. you know, we're talking Kale McCarr and Devon Taves as the best combo. That nobody would touch that. Yeah, that, that would be nobody um... would touch that. And the funny thing is, I didn't even know Fox went that late. I don't either. I gotta click on it. Yeah, he was. Wow, third round, 66 overall. I didn't, I honestly was not aware of that. So, uh, man, but it's tough. I, I would either – my three would be Fox, Tage Thompson, and Jacob Chikrin. Chikrin, I feel, is just kind of falling off. I think the shine has worn off a little bit on Chikrin. Very much so. For me, uh, but I probably would go Adam Fox. I would dip into the third round and go take Adam Fox for a defenseman. See, you would be scrutinized for stretching so far. And yeah, I know. But McAvoy, you'd look like yeah. a genius. And do you think Tyson – where would Tyson Jost go? This is kind of like the first guy that probably would still get drafted. He'd probably go, honestly, um, with that hype coming in, I, he would probably hit the bottom of the first round, if not early second round. I mean, it's not like he's looking for another career. He he was not no. bad coming in. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, he, he'd probably – go yeah no i don't i don't think he'd get out of the second round i think he'd go no. somewhere in, in the second round still because he still has value to teams so yeah that's an interesting one 2017 a couple more to go here for uh, those keeping score at home you know where this is yeah this is be another interesting one could you imagine uh, okay now looking at 2017 and yep. the sales pitch that you had like back-to-back -back years they're putting it's not ball arena it's it's Joe Sackick arena. If you get yeah. Adam Fox and Kale McCarr in back to back years, come on. Yeah. Yeah. So the Avs got McCarr with the fourth overall pick. And that's the one where you know all the odds were in their favor to to get the number one overall pick. They couldn't do worse than four. And that's exactly what they got in four. So when it happened, you were like like, come on, like wh what else could go wrong for the avalanche? It's the worst possible situation. And they got the best defenseman on the planet right now. Uh, so it worked in their favor. You redraft this thing. Kale McCarr is number one. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Uh, Nico Heischer went one to the Devils. Nolan Patrick. And that was kind of a, a, yeah. a upset, too, because Patrick really was kind of like a, the consensus number one. And fell and on draft day. Yeah, so uh, it kind of fell, quote, air quotes, to the Flyers at number two. And then Mir Huskinen went uh, number three to Dallas. So let's say we'll redraft this thing. Kale McCarr goes number one to the Devils. Who do the Avalanche go with at number four? I wouldn't mind Heischer. Like, as a as a, yeah, he's, a vested he's... interest in the Devils, <laughs> like, that pick right there for the Devils, that is their Gabe Landis guy. Mm -hmm. So it would be nice to have him as well. Um, but at the time, yeah, like that Nolan Patrick hype was high, and I'm I've always wondered what he would have looked like in an Avalanche sweater with that team. You wonder if things would have been how how things would have gone differently. Maybe yep. you don't you don't really know. Who knows? Um, I don't know, man. It, it, you know, McCarr's gone at number one. <laughs> Elias Pettersson at number five. Maybe you go that route. Um, who else is on here? Let's Kyler see. Yamamoto. How about, you know, you can go get a goalie. <laughs> I don't know if you take a goalie at number four, uh, but Jake Ottinger is there. Who just, oh, Yamamoto? No, not at number four. I don't, uh, I, no, that, that would have been, that would have been <laughs> way too high. You go get Shane Bowers or Connor go Timmons. <laughs> go get him. Or, yeah, either or. Um, who else is on here that really stands out? Nobody really jumping off the page so it's a very top heavy draft it looks like here yeah because you could see the games of service for these players yeah. dwindling the deep <clears> very low game. very low so in that world where kale mccarr is gone uh i probably go Pedersen. it's not a bad Pedersen. idea yeah i'm still fond of he sure yeah 20 and which wouldn't have been bad either. I, I like how you compared him to to uh Landis Cog. He yeah. kind of is their land, like he's not their best player, but he is maybe one of their most important players. Yeah, he's viewed differently <laughs> in the league, but in devil circles, he is essential. He's a big deal. Yeah. Uh 2018, Rasmus Dalin went number one to Buffalo. Um, you have names like uh 
Sveshnikov, Kat Kenyemi, Brady Kachuk. Um, and you have the Avalanche here at number 16, and that is Martin Kaup, uh, who I believe has left the league. <laughs> I think I think he went back to uh, the Czech. I believe he went back there. That's fine with me. Yeah. So you're not redrafting him at 16. Some of the names below him. Uh, you have uh, Keandre Miller. Th this draft... Man, I go on record. This might be one of the worst drafts ever from top yeah. to bottom. Because once you start, once you get out of the, even in the first round, like, yeah, I know this is not that long ago. So you're not going to have like real gaudy stats, but you don't really have anybody that does. You know, Quinn Hughes might be your best player in this draft at number seven. Well, you got Brady Kachuk there too. But I mean, you go down this list. If you're watching on YouTube, just I'm, I'm scrolling through. Once you start getting past like the second round, there's a lot of blank pages here and a lot of blank fields because guys just you didn't get those late round draft picks that really panned out. What are you talking about late round? Look, you we were just talking about the Avalanche picking Martin Cout at 16, mm -hmm. first round, 16. That's behind Joel Farabee, Noel, Noah Dobson. Oliver Wallstrom, Evan Bouchard at fifth, like at, that's the tenth pick. Like these are, yeah, nothing. <clears throat> no, this is this is a t that, that's why when I looked at this before we started, I'm like, man, am I taking Keandre Miller? I probably mm -hmm. am. I do I like. <clears throat> well, I I like Merkley's game, but Keandre Miller is a yeah, lot but, better player, and Rasmus yeah. Sandin. Would have been nice on the D to go along with a fresh Kale McCarr, but and they had Ryan Merkley, and yep. they chose not to sign him to a restricted free agent contract. So, man, Alexander Romanoff, maybe it, good luck. Ryan good luck McLeod, finding maybe? anything. This is a tough one. This is the one where it's like what you're giving up is okay, like fine in Martin Cout, but what you're getting is. Just kind of like a role player. Yeah, this is why you don't let Dallas have a draft. <laughs> is that where this one was? Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Uh, all right. And finally, the 2019 draft. This is the last one we're going to do. This is with Jack Hughes at number one. Capo Caco at number two. Kirby Doc number three. Colorado Avalanche number four. Bo Byram. How about this, man? Redrafting? Are you taking Bo Byram again? I'm taking Bo Byron again, and I think all four teams keep exactly who they picked. I don't think the Blackhawks go with Kirby Doc for some reason. I, I, I mean, well, they've gotten rid of him already, but I, I don't know. I, I'm surprised that you would keep Bo Byram here. And why am I surprised you would do that? Because uh, my boy's on here. Exactly. You, But you, I can't you, think you... selfishly. I, I know... Bo Byram, what he means to this team. Yeah. Zegers would be just another, like, I love Zegers and everything yeah. he does, but he would just be another Avalanche player. I, I love, you know me, like, I love Bo Byram. And I, I think he, I was kind of saying, like, hey, I'd give the guy a, a seven year contract. I, yeah. I wouldn't bridge him. I, I have faith in him that, you know, you put, give him a seven year deal, he will live up to that. Uh, I get why they didn't do that. But I, I, you know, he's had a lot of injuries. I get it. I, I still think he could be one of the most important players on this team. Absolutely love the guy. If it's a redraft, I probably lean towards yes, taking him again. But if you're going defense, look who's two picks later. Oh, let me get this out of there. Mo Sider. Mm. Mo Sider is two picks yeah. after that, and he's yeah. had a great year or great career up until now. Almost so, double the amount of games as Bo Byron. Too. Yeah close to it yeah and see and at 13 my probably my favorite goalie that nobody really likes to talk about anymore i was so high on spencer knight coming into the league mm -hmm. i would have given up three toes to have spencer knight <laughs> like so yeah. like to pass that up and like have some goalie stability going into that bubble would have been incredible but yeah I'm okay so, with Bo Byram. Yeah, oh, I'm fine with Bo Byram, but I, I, I'm thinking twice because, you know, like I said, if you want to go D, there's Mo Sider. Uh, and we're not done in this draft because in uh, 16, you took Alex Newhook. Um, do you, you redrafting? Yeah. I mean, Nolan you're, Foot. Probably, you're probably not, not taking him. What do you got? 
Nolan foot. <clears throat> That's who you would take? Yeah. Hmm. Really? Oh, yeah. I didn't know you liked him that much. I do. I do. I really do. And especially with putting so much into Alex Newhook and it, you really get nothing off of it. Yeah. I, I really think Nolan Foote would have been a good project for the Avalanche to work on and really could have developed him more than he has. Mm -hmm. Alex Bukash. Um, <laughs> I thought there was a goalie somewhere around here that I would have taken. Maybe I'm mistaken on that. <clears throat> Looking down a little bit. I just passed the guy. I'm going to go right back up to him because I, I just want to double check here. No. Um, Right there. Matthias Maselli. So that, that's probably who I would go with. There's, no joke there's... either. He, like, he, he, he had a phenomenal uh, season with Arizona. And uh, I think he was in, I think it was within the final three for the Calder, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. <clears throat> um, and he's got my last name spelled differently. So why would I not want him? On, but in all seriousness, like he probably, I mean, he's round four, number 98. Yeah. Uh, you would redraft this. He's going in the first round. No doubt about it. Uh, would it be a little bit of a stretch at 16? I don't know. He's, he had a, a really good first year. So, and you go through these names, there's not, I mean, there's some good names in here, but man, him at number in the fourth round, I'd take that. I would I'd too. definitely take that. I really would too. Yeah. So I'd, I'd probably go Matthias Maselli, and not just because um, it has your your name. And I think they pronounce him Michelli. Might be, it no, might be Michelli's, but there's uh, not too many Sullivans or Von Dooms. I have two names, <laughs> there's no, there's and no I, <laughs> I can't even find a namesake <laughs> in the league. Oh, that's great. So uh, that's the decade overall. Um, not bad for the Avalanche in the decade. What would you think the steal would be of all of those guys? Who do you think the steal is of, of the decade of draft picks for the Avs? Honestly, I it's twofold. You, it's bookends, honestly. Gabe Landeskog or Kale McCarr. Yeah, I, I, it's weird saying like a steal at number four, but he is. <clears throat> yeah. He, as amazing as he is, like, yeah, that can be considered a steal. I would say either Kale McCarr or Miko Rantanen. Uh, you yep. know, Mika Ranton in at 10. At yeah, 10, you're, very, you're very correct. You're looking at that right now. Like that is a an absolute steal. So those two guys, I would say, would be your steals. Um, and as far as grading, I'd say the, this is a, a flat B. Man, I don't know. I I know like the like I said, it was either boom or bust, but the 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 booms are huge. Yep. Gabe Landeskog. Miko Rantanen, Kale McCarr, Nathan McKinnon. And see, <clears throat> and you froze up there, and I'll, I'll make this point while you're uh, regaining. Like, you mentioned they're either boom or bust. The Avalanche were able to capitalize. Yeah, yeah and they were able to capitalize off the bust, package them up, and improve off the busts. So it's not like they some of them. Yeah, they they didn't some go down them. with the ship on those busts. Right. I mean, the Connor Bleckleys of the world didn't really give you much, but I don't know, man. I I would. You can't give them like an A plus because no. not all of them were home runs, but the the ones that were home runs are man are they are, they're becoming like all timers yeah. in the world of the Avalanche world. So that's why I would kind of give them an A minus, and it's because you have guys like you you know. Kale McCarr and and Miko Rantanen and uh, Nathan McKinnon alone, and then you add in Gabe Landeskog and his production, what he means to the team. It's just you're gonna be talking about these guys forever in Avalanche world. So I'd give him an A minus for that. They and, drafted and, line one this past decade. Yeah, yeah, and I, I like those picks. I feel overcome those bad picks. You're yep. gonna have bad picks, but the way that you drafted those those home runs. Uh, make those those bad picks not sting as much because look what look what's come out of it. So, fire away in the comment section. Um, who would you have taken in, in a specific draft? Are you like targeting a year and say like, man, I really wish we had gotten that guy instead? Uh, or Adam know. Fox and McAvoy. Yes. Oh man, I think you're gonna get 
<laughs> crushed for that one, dude. I am but, used uh, to it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, let us know what you guys think in the comments section. All right. That is going to wrap it up for today. Uh, thank you for tuning in, making it your first listen of the day. Always appreciated. We will be back tomorrow. Uh, follow over on Instagram. I think we're going to throw up a mailbag. So if you want to get involved in that, follow over on Instagram, Locked on Avalanche, and our threads page. We, we, we do have a threads page, yeah. All right, he is Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, Kyle Sullivan. I am Chris Maselli. This is the Locked on Avalanche podcast. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow.